I was longing for something. I just didn't know what it was at that point. I started questioning life. I started questioning who I was. I realized at that moment how much God loved me, how somebody could sacrifice their life for me. I knew at that moment he forgave me. I felt love. My name is Tim Heibach. I grew up in uh, Northwest Pennsylvania in uh, Erie. I live now with my wife here in Missouri City, Texas. I have two stepchildren, Amy and Eric. My father was in the military, in the army. I was born in a military base in Germany. Unfortunately, my parents were divorced when I was about three years old. So it was just me, my sister, and my mom. My mom did an amazing job of raising just me and my sister by herself. And through those struggles with a failed marriage and you know the challenges of raising two young kids, she really leaned on um, God and she was strong in her faith. So. Growing up, you know, young kids, she took us to church. We went to our religious education classes. We grew up Catholic, and um, I guess she kind of internalized a lot of it and just put on the show face so that, you know, we wouldn't see how bad things, you know, really were or the struggles she was going through to give us, you know, opportunities and things that she didn't have as a child. I think was maybe uh, seven or eight years old. When I had this dream, it was very vivid. It was like as if I was actually there. In this dream, I was on top of a cloud and there was an angel on this cloud and I was behind him and he didn't know that I was there. And so there was a pedestal or like a, a podium in front of him and there was a stone tablet just like the Ten Commandments and he was writing something on it but I didn't see what it was. So, you know, very slowly I kind of inched my head up just a little bit, you know, a little bit more to peek over his, his shoulder. And when I saw the words, the words were written on the stone tablet, the end is near. And that actually uh, scared me and the angel started turning his head to the side, you know, as if to turn around to see who was looking over his shoulder and that's when I woke up. But, you know, that was a dramatic impact for me that time is short, we'll all be judged, but, you know, God's love and grace, you know, it's available for everybody, for all of us, but we have to make the conscious decision to choose Him and to let Him into our hearts. Back in that time in middle school, I had a best friend and he was into hunting and I was into hunting and his dad owned a hunting camp. And that's where I was introduced to pornography. Um, his dad had some magazines next to the, in, in the restroom there in the hunting camp. So my friend showed me that magazine and that was kind of like, you know, an evil seed that was planted. And unfortunately that took root and led to bad fruit that grew within me and uh, eventually leaded to an addiction in pornography. So it progressed through high school. I knew that if, you know, I went to college, I'd be four years of credit card debt. So I decided to uh, enlist in the Army. My family is all Army service, so that played in part of it too with tradition. Six hours after graduation at, you know, three o'clock in the morning, I was in the back of my recruiter's car to go to the um, processing station to enter the military. I did a, just a short contract because my job training skill for the Army only required a three-year commitment. But during those three years, you know, you become the person that you most hang out with. And so the people I hung out with, um, you know, there was no, there was no, um, no faith, no religion. It was just drinking, hanging out, traveling, continuing with the uh, pornography addiction and uh, other stuff, you know, lying. That's really where my faith 
fell off, you know, I was out of the house. I didn't have my mother's guidance and I was pretty much free to do what I wanted when I wanted. And, you know, I took advantage of that being my own God to myself and, you know, going after my own needs and wants. After my three years in the Army, I decided that it wasn't for me to continue and my original goal was to earn money or get my GI Bill for college so I could attend college. So I um, attended Penn State, the Barron campus. So um, at this point in my life and in college, still had a porn pornography addiction and uh, at that point I had um, a collection of images on my uh, on a storage drive and so I had them all categorized different you know groupings and stuff but it was quite a large collection and took up a lot of space I started drinking at that point um, a lot of clubbing and also uh, having various relationships uh, intimate relationships it was like uh, no rules wild wild west just have a good time and, you know, I kept that part away from my family because it wasn't something, you know, I was proud of. But during the time you get the invites from friends, you fall into peer pressure and you just go along with the flow. You go with the crowd just like everybody else. I reached a point in my life that um, all these things that I was doing, my hobbies, uh, things I got into, the sins I was committing. I didn't realize it at the time, but there was just that, that emptiness. Since my parents were divorced at a young age, I never had a father figure, and I was searching for things in this world that I would think would, you know, give me lasting happiness. But no matter what I did, what hobbies I did, what sins I committed, it never really fulfilled me. So there was, there was a hole in my heart that I was longing for something. I just didn't know what it was at that point. In 2002, I was living with my girlfriend in New York City. She was from New York. We had met on the sailing ship, um, sailing on the Great Lakes over the summer. We realized that we weren't gonna make it off the small little incomes we had making uh, as working as sales associates. So I decided to join the Coast Guard. Um, I decided the Army wasn't for me and that the Coast Guard was the best choice. So at that point in 2002, that's when I started my career with the Coast Guard. We got married and uh, I decided it would be a good idea to start going back to church, find a local parish somewhere. Uh, there was a small Episcopal church in the North End, so we went there for a couple weeks and tried it out, but something just didn't feel right, and I didn't make any other attempts after that, and um, we just stopped going to church altogether after that. After seven years of being um, married to my uh, first wife, the, the marriage didn't work out. She had some trauma in her life, and um, I was also very selfish at that time. During my career in the military, there was a time every year we have to take an influenza shot. It's mandated as government employees. And uh, we had a coworker that was doing some research allegedly and that there was this substance in the influenza shot that affects your immune system. And so I got drawn into that lie. And once we were all in a public room in our meeting area in line to take a flu shot, I signed the paperwork stating that I took a flu shot and walked out without knowing that one of our officers was sitting in the back of the room monitoring people. So I lied about taking a shot and uh, got administratively uh, fined for that. I started to get depressed. I, w I was alone at this point, you know, on my own, just myself in the apartment. I started questioning life. I started questioning who I was, you know, did I have an identity? Did I have a purpose of being here? And if so, what was that purpose? I came close to starting to doubt whether, you know, God truly existed because I've never had a personal encounter with God. And, you know, I wanted to know that, okay, if, if God really exists, 
to show me, to prove it to me that, you know, he, he exists. My mother uh, would call me about once a week during my military career to give me some encouragement. She sent me a book. It was, in, it was entitled God Prove It. And I received it in the mail, but I just set it up on my bookshelf, not really thinking about it. And it sat there for a few months and uh, collected dust. So one Saturday morning, something prompted me to like pull that book off the shelf. I read it from cover to cover. So I was, you know, attentive. I had an open heart. I just wanted to realize, reaffirm, okay, God, do you exist? Okay, yes, you do. And after finishing the book, I realized that, okay, God, yes, you're real. So if this is true, if this is the case, um, then I realize the way I've been living is wrong and all the evil and the sin, you know, I do have to atone for that. So I need to start amending my life and start making right so I can um, start having a relationship with God. It had been 16 years since I've been away from the church, non practicing my faith. And one day I sat down in uh, my apartment and I wrote out, it was four pages of sins that I had committed over the last 16 years. And so I made the decision to go to confession, reconciliation. I took my paperwork with me. I decided that I'm gonna be bold and I'm gonna go in the confessional and sit right down in front of the priest. And I told him, forgive me, Father, for I've sinned. It has been 16 years since my last confession. And um, he gave me the absolution. As I was walking out of the confessional, I felt light, like I was walking on a cloud. So I exited the confessional. I started walking from the back of the church down to the very front pew. I wanted to be as close to the tabernacle as I could. And I, I knelt down to start saying my penance. After I said my penance, I started feeling the sensation in my heart. At first, I didn't know what it was, but it was an intense burning sensation. And it actually started concerning me because uh, being 33 years old, I thought, okay, was I about to have a heart attack? And this lasted maybe 15, 30 seconds. And I was almost about ready to get up and start asking for help when this burning sensation stopped. And then I felt the love of God. The love of God. It's, it's beyond human reason. It's beyond understanding. I, re I realized at that moment how much God loved me, how somebody could sacrifice their life for me. They suffered for me. And as horrible as my life was, all the sins I committed, all the dirt and filth I had inside, I, I knew at that moment He forgave me. I felt love. I felt the fire of the Holy Spirit enter my body. It was like a fire hose open full, full wide, just pounding into my chest. It was a feeling of complete envelopment, of love, of support, of understanding, of forgiveness. And it was at that point, my life, my life had changed forever. I wanted to run so fast out of that church, throw open the doors and scream at the top of my lungs that Jesus is real. There was something that changed inside of me. It's like having a moral compass. The things I used to do, I didn't want to turn back to. So uh, with that, I had to have a discussion with my girlfriend at, at the time, you know, now current wife, that uh, we had to stop doing some things that we had been previously doing. And we both sat on the bed and I had to have a heart to heart with her and tell her, I'm like, look, we've been doing some things and I, I don't feel comfortable with doing that anymore. I'm a changed person, you know, I still very much care about you, but if you want to 
uh, have a relationship with me. I do want to get married, but uh, I would need to sponsor you through RCIA, through the Catholic process to um, become a Catholic, because that was very important to me, to have a Catholic woman and get married in the Catholic Church. If she was very open to the concept, she was willing to go through that because she knew how important it was for me and for us. I'm so thankful that being a merciful God, despite my ignorance and my stubbornness, that He waited all that time, that He allowed His Son to touch my life. Thank you.